Hi there. I'm going to do an install today on a new Holland Combine and these are just the tools that I'm that I use when I do an install. You don't require a lot of tools but I need an 18 and a 17 millimeter wrench and I actually bend this one a little bit and you'll see why once I get going in there there's a tight spot that requires that and a punch for putting the concaves in, ratchet, impact wrench and I have an assortment of sockets, a 15 16 a 19, an 18, and a 16. And that's everything you need to, to change the concaves out. Sometimes you don't need all these, but these are the ones that I always carry with me. And then I have a metal rod here that's just a rod out of an old concave, and it's a quarter inch rod, and I use that for setting the, the pinch point and making sure it's square. Also, I have this long piece of tubing, and I use that to put uh, the concave frame in just makes it a little easier. You can stand on the ground and flip it up in there. I use a half inch impact and that rattles everything out of there real quick and it also tightens it to pretty much the torque that I like because it'll be very close to 100 pounds torque. So I carry this with me all the time and one of the most important things is, which I kind of humor, so you need a spare battery probably and the charger and don't forget to take it home with you when you're done because I've done that too many times. This pile of bolts, these are the bolts that are used to hold the concaves into the frames and they're a special bolt. They have just the right amount of shoulder in there so that when you're putting product through the combine, the pounding action isn't on the threads, it's on the shoulder so that it doesn't, the bolts don't get embedded into the steel and the threads. And when we used to use bolts that had threads all the way and you'd have to use the impact to take them out and then they were completely screwed up from, from being pounded on. So. Uh, you, for a new Holland, you're going to need eight set or eight bolts like this, and it comes with uh, the concaves. I'm just going to go over a few of the things that we've done on this frame to make them better and stronger for when they're in the combine. And the first one, the one that we did was we, we put a, a brace on the side of the, the frame here. We kind of doubled up the thickness of the frame. We were finding that the factory ones were getting sprung and out of shape, and they're pinch point was a way off. It was because it was getting sprung in this area. So we added a piece of metal here and we've never had one lose its shape yet. We've been very fortunate. That has helped immensely. Um, on this end of it, these are the pins that go into the jaws in the center of the combine. And this piece on a new Holland one butts up against the metal. But on ours it goes over top so that it has support from underneath it. And you'll find that the new Holland ones kind of go wavy on here and then they'll wear through and, and you have a not bad shape of concave, but this end is wore out. And you can see this bar that's in here. That's in there for a reason. When you're putting the concaves in, we've got that bar in there to help guide the concave onto these dowel pins. And you don't have to reach away underneath to, to do that. And on this end, we have the bolt holes for the concaves. And you'll see that there's four and I get lots of calls saying that we shorted them bolts but you only use two of them and the other one is to use a punch to align the concave. So I'm just going to demonstrate putting a concave into the frame. It's a little tricky when it's just laying on the table like this because it's going to want to move around on me but we'll get her in there and you'll see that that bar in here will help guide that into place. Like I said, it's a lot easier when it's in the combine. As you can see, there's two bolts required to hold the concave in, and the other two holes are just for a punch to line the holes up. And on our bolts, we have just the right amount of shoulder so that the concave and the frame is sitting on the shoulder and the threads aren't getting pounded out from the impact of the crop going through. And so when you put that bolt in there, I like them to go in that direction because you want to tighten on the head, not on the nut, because the nut is serrated and it'll peel the metal out. And it'll be way easier to loosen it if you go on the head side. Right now we're in the hopper and we're, where the motor is to adjust the concave up and down. And quite often you have to drop these two jam nuts so that you can suck the concave right up to a quarter inch clearance. And here's the two jam nuts, you're going to need two inch and eighth wrenches and you just back these off about three turns and then afterwards after you get everything set up perfect we'll have to come back up and screw the nuts against the this gold part and lock them in place so that they can never come too high. 
Now we're going to tackle the fun part. Uh, and I'm joking. This is uh, probably the worst part of the whole operation is getting these factory ones out of here. They're heavy and uh, a little awkward to get out. So first of all you got to take the bolts out holding the extensions and the pins that are holding the levers. So I'm talking about these two bolts and this pin. And on some of the other combines there's a bolt in here that, and you never know what size they're going to be. They're usually 18s but quite often it's a 16 millimeter socket. And you need to save all the hardware because it'll be going into the new concaves. And as you can see, there's a couple of square blocks here. That's not a factory thing. That's there's been a few dealers that have put them in and it stops this extension from uh, blowing out, uh, which is sometimes happens. Um, be sure not to lift these two levers up very high uh, or the whole concave will come down and we want to get the extension out before that happens. Now we can raise the levers up and I got these little rubber attachments here to hold the levers up. So you put them on so that they don't fall down while you're doing this. So as you can see it didn't fall out of there. And one thing I forgot to mention, before you get to this point you should have went to the combine up in the cab and moved your concave to one inch for the concave opening. That's kind of the sweet spot for putting these concaves in and out. So now I'm going to grab my trustworthy bar and just pop it out of there. Now the ugly part, getting them out of here. This is quite a challenge. There's the tires in the way, on load augers in the way. This is probably the reason why I started building uh, the module or concave so I don't have to do this anymore. That came out easier than most. So one thing you need to do before you install the new concave and uh, one item that I forgot to mention for tools that you need is a little flashlight. And you need to look at the jaws in here to make sure that they aren't full of debris, chaff and I don't know if you saw that, but there was some material in there. And while we have the concave out, this is called a, an S-cube rotor. It has the wide rub bars. Um, they're, not being, they're not as common anymore. Most of them have twin pitch, which is a little short, narrow rub bar. Nothing wrong with these. In fact, I really like them. So now, now I'm going to install the, the new MAD frame. It's almost like it knows where to go, but not quite. And now we just got to get the two pins into the jaws, which can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to put the rotor in neutral so we can spin it. I'm just going to go do that now. So I just confirmed they're both in the jaws and now we're going to lift it up and try and put it into the, lo into the locking mechanism. This is when I get my, my bar out again because it's almost impossible to do just by hand. So I hook it in the middle like that and then I pull down hard on this, this hand. And as you can see it didn't go in.
I'm going to try one more time. And it doesn't want to go in, so we're going to have to make some adjustments. This is typical because the new Hong Kong caves get stretched and to set the pinch point properly, they've had to adjust the bolts up here that we're going to, to move ours to get this in. So first of all, you got to loosen the 15 sixteenths. And then you need a 16 socket to loosen the four smaller ones. Normally I recommend getting an air hose and blowing this all out so that everything slides clear, but they beat me to it. They already blew it out. It's pretty nice. So there's four of these to loosen on each, each hanger. So I mentioned I have a wrench that's got a band in it. That's so it fits in here properly. Otherwise you're up against these lines and, and uh, they're awful snug. So now we have all the bolts loose. I undid the, the adjuster bolt, got it. They're all loose so that everything is loose and can float around. And so now we should be able to jam this, this frame in there, hopefully. So now we're going to try installing this again now that everything's loose. That's a good feeling when that goes in. And I have had trouble getting them in on some different models and it took me a while to figure out what was going on. But I think it's that the rotor cage has been sprung a little bit and the latches are hooked to that. So if that's been sprung a little bit, they can be a little tough to, to get in. Not so much on, on this one. This is an 8.9. But on the older ones, the 9070s, they can be, they can be a handful. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the back concave, and I'm only gonna put one in, because when I'm squaring it, without the front one in, I can see in there to make sure I've got everything lined up properly. So now I'm gonna go get my 375, which normally goes in the back, and I'm gonna put that in and tighten her up. So now I'm gonna. I'm going to throw the 375 in the back position. So you slide it in and you get it up on that plate that we mentioned before. And you just kind of wiggle it in there. Help, help if my finger wasn't in the hole. There we go. Like I said, that punch is those center holes are just for lining for the punch. So we're putting the, the bolts in this way around so that we're going to tighten on the head. So I already have my impact here with my 18 on there. I'm just going to tighten them up. So that's it. That's all there is to putting that concave in there. So now we're moving to the other side and we're going to pop these concaves out. And uh, the main reason I wanted to come over here to show you the other side, because we probably could have done it just from one side, but I saw an issue here. So as you can see, there's threads on this adjuster bolt. This one's got about five eighths of an inch. This one's got a quarter inch. As Soon as you see something like that, that should throw a red flag because that means that these are not square. This one is pulled more this way, and this one is pushed in. So maybe the concave sprung, and the dealer had to do that, which is fine, but if it sprung that bad, you probably aren't gonna have a good pinch point in there. So with it sitting cockeyed like that, it's kinda twisted a little bit in there, so you're gonna have a pinch point on the front corner and on the back corner, or vice versa, whichever way these are position. So when that happens, you're only thrashing on the back corner on hitting this side and the front corner on the, on the far side. 
And what's going to happen is you're, you're not going to thrash your grain properly. It's not going to load the sieve properly. You're going to have feeder house problems because it's not feeding properly because it's too tight on that front corner and it doesn't want to come in there. And also your hopper is going to be ugly because it's not going to thrash. So it's very important to get these square. And I just point that out. Like the only way that would be square with these in that position is if these were welded into the combine wrong. And I don't think that's the issue. That's, it's just, it's not squared properly. So this combine was probably not doing a very good job on this side. So now I'm gonna pull the bolts and the pins out and get the extension out. And remember, don't lift these handles up all the way till you get the extension out. You don't want that concave to fall down prematurely. And like I said before, save this hardware because you're going to need it for when you're putting in the mad concaves. Oh, and here's a bad one, but we got a loose bolt. That had to run much longer, that bolt was going to come out of there, and the one side of the extension was probably going to break loose, and the next thing you know, it's going to spit it right out the side of the combine. So this is good to catch that too. You need to check these bolts quite often because the, the, like that's taken a lot of beating in there and you know every few days I like to go and just check on these bolts and make sure they are tight after you put them in. So good, I, so far I'm doing good. I haven't dropped anything or uh, lost anything. I just about lost a finger there but So when I'm bringing this out, I'm just going to point out this. This is the part that goes on the pins in here. That's what it swivels on. So now I'm just going to show you the difference between the two extensions. This is a factory one. This is a mad one. And the biggest difference is on the factory one, they just have a little piece of tin that goes around here. And that quite often gets blown out. And then the extension will actually flip out at the bottom and quite often go right out the side of the combine, which is not very cool. So we made a one piece here, it's all one piece, and we have never had one of them fail yet. If your extensions are in good shape, you can put this into our, our frame. The only thing that you have to do is this piece of angle iron that holds the wires in, you have to just zip that off so that it's a flat, just a flat piece of flat iron and not an angle iron, and then it fits right in. So now I'm gonna lift the handles up, put the rubber doohickeys on. And there's the front one. Now I'm going to grab my bar and pop that concave out of there. See that one's really stuck in there and that's probably because that, that front one is not square. And you can see on this concave it's had key stock welded on here. And that would make this concave very aggressive, but hard to square again, because it's not meant to be that high. Now the fun part. So once again, I'm gonna check in the jaws to make sure they're clean. And there was quite a bit of material in the front one of this one. Maybe we should save that canola. It's only $20 a bushel. So we're going to try installing this without adjusting those, but I can almost guarantee they're not going to go in. And I'm in both jaws. Now I'm going to put the bar back in there and try and put them in.
as you can see these didn't go in they're not even close so I'm going to loosen all the hanger bolts off again and uh, readjust them This is why I have that bent bolt because this bar is in the way, or bent wrench, sorry. This extendable ratchet makes this nice because these are usually incredibly tight. So I've got everything loose, the adjuster nuts are backed off so that they can go to where they want to be. And I'm going to put a little dab of grease on these pins just to help them slide in a little bit. Like I said, I've never tried it before, but Anything that makes it easier is always a good thing. So I hit that just to make sure it was back in the jaws. Now we're going to try her. She's tight. One went in. So as you saw, I was having trouble getting this to go in and I took a closer look and this latch was seized. And so I had to just back the bolts off a little bit more and tap this with a hammer and it broke loose and now it's floating free. And it better go in now. There she is. So we're going to get this latch so that it doesn't fall down. There was a little bit of an issue on this one. I think somebody's been in here doing some stuff because there's grind marks in here and stuff. And that's why it was being so rude. So now I got the 375 in here. We're going to slide it into position. Remember there's that bar in there. You just got to set it on it. Push her in. Give her a couple of wiggles. Find my punch. And throw the bolts in her. And I see there's no decals on this frame, but these, we, we usually put a decal on there that says to torque these to 100. And that's pretty close to what this impact wrench does. Okay, now we're going to move to the cab and suck these up to a quarter inch. And, uh, Get them square. So I'm going to be measuring the distance between this rub bar and the first thrashing bar. And I want to get a quarter inch there and a quarter inch on, on the furthest thin one. And not having that front concave in makes it nice because I can get my head down in here so I can see exactly what I get so I'm not guessing that I have a quarter inch. I do have a, a rod that fits in there but a good visual is, is always nice to have also. So right now we're at about half an inch. Because these old concaves had key stock put on them, I'm going to have to go into the hopper and move those jam nuts a little bit more because the key stock was a way up and they adjusted them a lot more than what I thought they did. So as you can see, we're sucking this up and we're going to get it to a quarter inch. I carry a rod. Everybody kind of laughs at this thing, but it works so great. When you're when you're trying to zero it out and get it square, I want to be a quarter inch from this bar to the rub bar and the same thing on the last bar over here. So I'm able to lay this in there and that's a quarter inch. So when I spin it up and put a rub bar up against there, I want to make that a quarter inch there and a quarter inch or slightly less on this side. So I'm measuring the inside and the outside. So right now, when we put the frame in, 
it kind of adjusted these to where they should be and it's nice we're not going to have to move them where it's sitting is very good so where I checked is right in the middle and so I'll move these bolts in the nuts in and we got very lucky they're both the same amount of thread sticking out so that means they're both square and if they weren't if this one had less than that one I would just move it a little bit and move the other one the opposite way a little bit because we did it in the middle and that should get it perfect so when you're done the bolt threads should be fairly even and that's all there is to to square in that so the next step is to put the concave in the front position and throw the extension in and once we get the extension in we're done and the only other thing is to go in and calibrate the monitor so that it is set at a quarter inch because that's what the concave's at. So I was just informed by the customer that he's going to combine barley first so we're going to put the finger grate in the front. Uh, the finger grate in the front works very well for barley. That's lot out, lots out at the front. Uh, the more grain you can let out at the front is less grain that has to come out in the separator area. So the bigger you can put in the front, the better. If you're seeing in the barley that there's maybe a few too many heads that aren't broke apart and there's ons on it and you want it just cleaned up a little bit, just swap the 375 to the front, put the finger grate in number two. And that works the same for canola too. If you're seeing a few pods sneaking into the hopper, just swap them around and uh, it'll fix it up. That's the, the great thing about this frame and the, and the small concaves that you're able to just stop and flip them around and try different things and it's nothing worse than sitting in the cab all day thinking oh, I should have done this and I should have done that but it was too much work and here we can make it an easy change so you can try it and, and uh, give it a go. So I'm going to throw that finger grate in and uh, tighten it up. So it looks like I forgot my punch on the other side, so. And they're fairly rude without a punch. Now I'm going to tighten these latch bolts up before I put the extension in and just check the pinch point one more time before I throw the extension in. I don't trust that cordless so I'm just going to make sure these are, are good and tight. So now we're going to throw the extension in it, goes onto these little short stubs and just swings up into position. And he's doing uh, barley first, so we want to run it in the outward hole. And you slip in the 
this pin that holds uh, the lever into position so it's never going to come out of there. And we're going to tighten these two bolts. And I'll finish tightening these bolts up um, and we're complete.